All right, so here's how I have my four SEGs. Bifacial 400 panels, tilted up against a fence. And what I did is I have a piece of wood like that as backing between there. And then I have the back sides of the panels zip tied to the wood so they don't fall over when wind comes through. And that has worked good so far. And from there, I have the two wire 10 gauge running from the panels over here <clears throat> under the carport and going to the grow watt min 6000 lx xl here's how i have it underneath here so this does have dual mppts right here going in there all this wire is 10 gauge here is the plug which you have to wire up and it has an S S J E W 12 gauge. That runs up here, goes this way. Through the back side of the shed here and comes out under here. Right there through grommets into this Siemens outdoor general duty enclosed switch 30 amp to 40 V 250 this is considered this is what is required by the power company it must have a lockable disconnect this is a three pull but you only need a two pull See how there's three spots in there? This is a physical air brake. And it's running into conduit. I did have, I did have the electricians come out here and do this. This was the connection point between the inverter and the service panel. And it does run through this conduit, which I believe is one inch maybe. This here is just water line that I've got outside that I don't want to expose to the water or to the weather. And it's run through, the conduit is run through that into the service panel into a 30 amp disconnect. All right, so the wire runs up through the floor here into this tubing going up here into 10 two wire, which is direct burial. I believe they call it, it's a, it's this gray stuff here. 10 two, which means it has three conductors and it. it has two hots and a ground. All right. And it runs up here into this 30 amp double pull breaker. I can't remember who makes this, maybe Eaton or something. If you can read it on that label. And I do have the Emporia, which monitors all of my circuits. And on this 10, when you're running it, when you're trying to monitor a 220 circuit, you only need to put it on one leg and then increase the multiplier by two. Got it? All right. So here is the clean section of how I did the wiring, cable management. And what I did is I brought the bulk of the wire up and then I let these hollow effect sensors suspend. So these are all kind of just suspending instead of running it up and then connecting it directly into it. If that makes any sense. All right, that's it. The one thing I would like to see about this Emporia is this to be able to be powered by DC power instead of AC directly off of here. And the reason why is when the power goes down, right? As long as I have all my monitoring system set up, on battery then I can still see it but when the power goes down this turns off all right now I'll go show you the remainder of the array all right from the grow watt we had the four panel array back there and 
now we have six panels because you can only buy them in series of lots of 10 on a pallet. So here's the 10 gauge wire running this way to the panels over here. And this is my mounting system right here, bungee cords. Bungee cords with just slight tension on it, not enough to actually bend the panels, but enough to keep it from falling over when blow wind blows through here. All right, and then the bungee cord goes down and around this angle iron on the bottom here, and it goes from one panel to the other. So the panels basically hold themselves in. <clears throat> and these panels are all series connected. This only took me about 20 minutes to connect. I'd say the bungee cords were a little bit longer. It took me a little bit longer, so maybe 30 minutes to connect all these panels and plug them into the grow watt. But this is how I did it, right where the bolt holes are. Just goes straight through there. All right. Panels, bungee cords, down around the angle iron on the carport, like this. Okay, that's the back of the array. And here is the front of the array. And this is what's all going into the grow watt. So six SG4, SEG 400 bifacials here. And on top, I have two 100 watt panels up there. All right, and two 100 watt panels that are up there and all I did to connect those, these are in series, so those are 212, so that would give it like 24. I think the nominal voltage combined is 40 VOC. Um, I put, what did I put up there? I put, I used Gorilla Construction Adhesive to put those up. I just glued those with three dabs, one, two, three, one, two, three on the bottom and then a strip on the top. Where they make contact but that is to charge uh the batteries in the car or at least that's what i'm planning on doing so just run those over and then down into the cars and then battery tender problem solved all right but since i don't have enough cable right now to do a battery tender on my car what i do is i have this one 100 watt panel <gasps> Right here, this was a Harbor Freight one. The two up on top are from Rich Solar. It was a two pack from Amazon. Those were the panels I got when I first started this thing. And to hold this down, this is how I have it. I have under here, these bungee cords, right? One bungee cord going from one outlet to the other. And then I have this large landscaping Burke just holding that bungee cord down and has it worked so far? Yes, I've had I've had rainstorms come through, windstorms come through. And if you can tell the, the height of the grass, this was all mowed down before I put these in. So yes, does the grass affect the production of the solar? Yes, absolutely. And yeah, that's it. That's it. That's exactly how tall the grass is. It was completely mowed. When it's completely mowed, I get, I would say, 2,500 watts off of the 4K, uh, 4K array. All right, that's it. Peace.